Hello to my Oshkosh guitar students or anybody else who happens to stumble upon this video. I hope you are well. The video is about tuning and hopefully we will look at this idea from the perspective of somebody who does not know how to tune a guitar or finds guitar tuning frustrating or whatever. So it is not intended necessarily for somebody who already is very comfortable with tuning their guitar. So what we're going to do is talk about a tool that you can use to kind of demystify tuning your guitar a bit. And it is an app that I would very strongly recommend looking at. Um, most good apps will do this, but the one that I like because it operates on all of the different platform forms as far as I know, so like on an Android or an iPhone or whatever, and it's also there's a free version that has all of the features that the pro version has so if you don't want to invest anything other than a little bit of time and maybe a few advertisements you can use the free version successfully so it's called tuner t1 Let's see if i can get this to go up here tuner t1 and why i like this a lot is instead of just dealing with the pitches like the sharps and the flats and the e's and the f's all that kind of stuff what we do here is we're dealing with an exact number it's called a frequency and we measure them at least in this environment we measure them in Hertz so for instance you may have heard of a 440 tuning that means that the a pitch is at around 440 Hertz so a higher pitch is going to have a higher number a lower pitch here would be a 220 a 110 and if we kept going down so the numbers go up and down as the pitches go up and down and that gives us a way to be super exact when we're tuning okay so that's the first thing get an app that gives you the exact pitches so that you don't have to worry about note names for now the next thing to think about if you do not know about this is tuning if we want to tune our guitar and move the pitch down so with your ears you can hear that I'm tuning down further. Okay, you'll notice too that this number up here is going down. Now I'm gonna bring it back up. See how the number is going up as the string goes up in pitch. So what we're shooting for with this string, this is just an example, I'll go over this again here in just a second. What we're shooting for is 82, the number 82. Okay, so you can see that you can get very exact with this type of a tuner and you don't have to worry about note names or anything like that or sharps or flats. You can just shoot right for the exact number. So in the notes of this video, I will have these typed out. And what it is, is for each string, for each string I give the number for the frequency. I give the exact number. That way you can tune precisely. Now, I will say that this, it's still going to be a little bit, um, I don't want to say confusing, but it will you'll have to think about it as you're doing this to begin with, but it is a really fast way of getting exact. And eventually you won't have to think about any of this, but for now it's really good and it helps. So another thing is I use the biggest string I call the string number six, biggest string, biggest number, smallest string, is number one. Most books do this. This is the standard way of numbering your strings. Every once in a while you'll run across somebody who calls the big string number one because that's usually the closest to their eyes when they're looking down at the guitar. And that's okay, but we do want to know that the standard numbering system is one through six from the smallest to the big. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the next thing is, so when I say the sixth string, you can follow that string to see what tuner is used to change the pitch. So that was the sixth. So let's say, for instance, we we're doing one, two, three, the third string. If I follow this string, I can see what tuning mechanism I need to use. And that's nice to know as well, if you don't already. Okay, so the strings, I'm just going to say this really fast and then we'll go over them individually. The strings from biggest to smallest, that's usually how I like to tune is from the biggest to the smallest. The frequencies will be 82, 110, 146.8, 96, 247, and 
29.8. And these might not be the most perfect numbers, but they're the ones that my app says we are getting when my guitar is in tune. So do your best with them, get as close as you can, and your guitar will sound in tune. So those are the strings frequencies, and I'm going to go through them very fast. Um, one thing that is good to know about is that if you're tuning, if your guitar is out of tune, it's usually best to start lower a little bit and then tune up to the pitch. Okay, so as I'm tuning up to the pitch, the guitar tends to hold its tune a little bit better because of the tension balance between the strings over here on the neck and the strings on the other side of the nut of the guitar. Sometimes they can get caught in here a little bit and if you go from flat to sharp or from below the pitch to the pitch, it will work a little bit better. So then another hint for this is when you tune your guitar, I would very strongly recommend tuning it three times in a row immediately because as you adjust the string tensions, that will also change the tension in the neck of the guitar, which will then again change the string tension and that changes the pitch. So you don't have to remember any of that, just know that it will be best if you can tune your guitar three times in a row. Once it's in tune, just tune it once to keep it in tune and that's okay. So we're gonna go through this quickly and we're gonna start on the big string and go to the smallest string. The first number we're looking for is 82. And I'm really close there already because we just did that. The next number we're looking for for string number five is 110. So again, I'm lowering it and then I'm gonna come up to 110. Okay, that's close enough. The next one is 146. 146.8 actually and we're very close to that right now the next one string number three is going to be 196 and again I like to come from below up to the frequency we're looking for 196 Okay, that's close enough. The next one is th uh, 247. 247 for the second string. Okay, the next one, the smallest string, string number one, is 329.8. So again, I'm going to come below and then I'm going to come back up. 329.8 and that is very close okay so again I would go through this a number of times on your guitar basically how I work it is I said three times but that can be whatever you want it to be. I tune and I retune and I retune until my guitar stays in tune the f when I when I play it. So what ends up happening is I might be out of tune, I'll tune my guitar and then I'll double check it and it'll be out of tune again so I retune it and that happens as the neck adjusts and everything. And then at a certain point it's going to stay in tune and that's when I'll start playing the guitar. And once you're used to doing this, you could probably go through this entire process in less than a minute, even maybe less than 30 seconds. It's really efficient once you know it. Okay, so that's that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is these apps are wonderful, but as you could see, every time I was talking, the app was hearing what I was saying. And earlier there was motorcycles driving by and it was hearing that just now the air conditioning kicked in so it would hear that what you can also do is you can get a little device like the the ones that are more popular right now are called snark tuners if i were to buy one of these in oshkosh i would just go to hide music and buy one they're very reasonably priced i i don't remember what they are i haven't bought one for a long long time 
they last for a while and what's nice about a snark type tuner or any tuner of that sort is you can clip it onto the guitar head and it will hear right through the guitar so then the room noise doesn't interfere with your tuning so one thing that some of my students have issues with using these apps is anything that you hear in the room, including like what we just said, the air conditioning running, a heater running, somebody outside the room talking, or like earlier there was motorcycles driving by, this thing will pick all that up. So if you're not really careful, it can kind of interfere with your tuning. You do get used to that and you can work around it easily, but buying something like a Snark tuner it can be nice and handy and it helps especially if you're in an environment where there's other sounds so you don't have to tell all of the people in your band to be quiet until you're done tuning and then you can also get tuners that run in your in between your guitar and your amp all that kind of stuff it's all good but to start out with again to summarize i would get something like this tuner t1 there's a number of different apps that i use and really like another one is the guitar toolkit that one is not free at all. In fact, I don't think it's even very cheap. However, it works really well too. And let's see here. You can see this one also does have the frequency as well. Anything of that sort, um, whatever you find the easiest to use. So get something like that. And once you're used to tuning, then just grab a tuner and clip it onto your guitar and that works well too. And if you're always by yourself and not around very much noise, the apps work just fine. That's what I normally use in my practice. Um, but the clip-on tuners are good or the ones between your amp and your guitar are really good too. And if you have any um, questions about this or comments or things that you would like clarified or questions about tuning or anything in general, you can email me. I think that my email will is on this account or else you can just Google Oshkosh Guitar and contact me through that. So I hope you are well. I hope you are surviving whatever is happening in your environment. Thank you and have a good day.